Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today, I have Matt Brewster, the roofer. I met him, I don't know, what, how long ago? Four years ago? Five years ago? Yeah, I think four, yeah. Four years ago. And he, I just asked to go on a roofing job just to see what y'all were doing. And y'all were putting on like some sort of poly roof, right? It was yeah, like we a, were doing a TPO on this neighbor, which is a membrane. And we were doing standing seam metal next door. Yeah, it was two really unique builds. And I thought that was really cool. But both of us kind of forgot our sun. You forgot your sunglasses. Yes. And I didn't. We actually have a YouTube video on it. Yeah, and you yeah. can you can go check it out if you like. But <laughs> when you were recording, <laughs> you were like, I'm like, all right, just open your eyes really wide. Yeah. And, you, <laughs> and you're like explaining <laughs> what the roof was. Yeah. So and, if you don't know what TPO is, it's super white and reflective. Right. And it's designed that way. So if you're up on a TPO roof, roof and you don't have eye protection on you basically can't see anything yeah you're blind yeah. it was so it I was, was like blind. okay shoot <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. that was good so so our main goal for this podcast is um matt brewster actually has a complete opposite style of marketing strategy that i do he actually kind of stays off of social media altogether we have some of the same marketing strategy but he doesn't use social media at all and i know there's a lot of home inspectors out there that uh, don't like to use social media and they ask me how to market. And then I'm like, well, I'm probably not the best person to ask. So, <laughs> because I have a certain way, but there are other ways to market and grow your business. And then also we are going to talk about uh, what he needs in our reports to deliver accurate reports uh, or no quotes to mm -hmm. repair the roofs. Cause you've received pretty bad inspection reports in the past where you're like, well, I have to go out there. And our goal is to minimize your trip so you don't have to do it so the client can keep their timeline straight yeah because they only get 10 days and if they're on day seven it could take matt two days to get out there to get an accurate report but if you get good pictures and documentation and verbiage in there he can develop a good uh picture report so that being yeah. said we're going to go into the marketing side of things so what is your, like, you would say your number one key is to marketing, you know, for you growing your business? Uh, man, if I had to pick a number one, it's, this sounds cliche, it's consistency. Just doing, you're saying like doing a good job? It's, it's just do the work, right? Okay. So we can go through kind of how the activities I do and how I came to decide I'm going to do those activities in those specific quantities. Okay. Um, but the, the one thing, so to speak, is regardless of what your activities are, you have to do them consistently, right? And so we've talked off air, so to speak, as to why I don't do a lot of social media marketing. And it's not because I don't believe in it, because there's a hundred ways to skin that cat. The reality is I don't have the time necessarily or the interest in editing video and, and keeping up a, a really consistent social media presence. And therefore, on the business side of the house, it's not that useful for me. Right, because I'm not going to be doing it. I mean, you're posting multiple times a day. Right. I'm not going to do that consistently. I might do it for a week, and then you're not going to see me for a month, and that's just not going to work. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's one thing I say about social media content. I'm like, it doesn't matter what you post. Yeah. Just post so they see your name. So, what would you say you're consistent in then? Yeah. So here's what I do. Um, weekly, it's uh, five handwritten notes minimum. Oftentimes, there's there's quite a bit more than that, but I've I've got minimum standards, and the principle behind that is. Regardless of what's going on, good week, bad week, you made a ton of money, you made no money, you do the activity, right? So it's five handwritten notes per week, 20 phone calls per week, and those are not follow-up calls to prospects. Those are, those are phone calls to people within your referral base or people you're trying to add to your referral base, just kind of like touches, so to speak. Um, in our business, we do a lot of door knocking, specifically for newer guys, right? So that would look like 100 knocks per week. And, you know, full disclosure for, for home inspectors watching this, I'm not sure that door knocking would make that much sense for you guys. But we have Maybe open houses. We have open that houses. So yeah, so, but the, the idea behind that is and how I got to those numbers is if, for me, I like to, if I don't have data to back up what I'm doing, it makes me really anxious. It's like we had a conversation once when you came on our show before COVID put the kibosh on it for a bit. Mm -hmm. Now I was like, well, what's the numbers behind that? And you're like, well, I'm, I'm never not busy, right? Which you're not, obviously. So obviously it works well. For me, I like to know, okay, if I'm going to knock on this many doors, that's going to equal this many leads and that's going to equal this many jobs because then I know I can just feed the activity into the machine, so to speak, and it's going to spit out the effect I'm looking for, right? 
So whatever that ends up being for, for people, if you're not going to be doing a lot of social media type stuff, just make sure you've got data to back it up. Don't just throw it out there on a whim, right? And that data exists in every industry. It's pretty easy to find. Right. So I know what you mean by handwritten notes, but a lot of other yeah. home inspectors do not. So what do you mean by a handwritten note? Okay. So let me go back to before I was exposed to kind of that style of marketing. What got me to write handwritten notes was back when I lived in Florida, I owned a gym. And we had this guy from ADT come by my house to sell us insurance. He ended up not getting the deal because, or not insurance, sell us security, right? right? He ended up not giving me the deal because he gave me one of those gross wet fish handshakes. And it just <laughs> <laughs> weirded me out, right? But what he did do is a couple of days later, I get a handwritten card in the mail thanking me for my time. And I was like, no one's ever done that. Like, people don't do that anymore. That's, that's so antiquated. Like, the, how cool is this? Like, it really stood out to me. So immediately I go back to my gym. I'm like, guys, we're writing handwritten notes to every new member. It's just a touch that other people don't get. You didn't get. buy a security service, did you? No, because of the handshake, right? <laughs> but, but the idea behind it's awesome. He, he made up, he went from 0% respect to like 60 for the handwritten notes. So <laughs> imagine funny. if he had given a proper handshake. I would have bought two security systems. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, so the what I've always mentioned before, it's even in our uh, book that we've written for the HIW book and it, the handwritten notes. It's like, there's a lot of power behind that. It's, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. just... Take the time to say, hey, thank you for letting me do your home inspection or, you know, uh, completing that roof job and let me know if anything happens or comes up, we'll be there. Yeah. And uh, it just brings in that. I'd like to always say we forget about the human element nowadays, these days. Yeah, and, that's a great way to put it. And I feel like it brings in that humanity of being like, no, I'm human and I really do care about the service I provide. And I feel like that handwritten note adds that in there. Yeah. And I think so, too. I like to work by referral. So ultimately the way that I work now is it's a hundred percent by referral. Right. And within our office, we have a you know, pretty good revenue and just about 88% of that is organic. Okay. So, so there's, there are inbound leads that come in, but we work a lot by referral. Why do, why would we want to do that? And why are handwritten notes part of that? If you look at the concept of, you know, where do I want to get my sales? Right. I think to a certain extent, um, there's a lot of like life hacks now that are pretty popular. At some point, those border on laziness, right? It's just like, what's the next hack? Like, what's the next thing I can right. cut a corner on? That's not the goal, right? But the goal is working smarter and harder, not just not the work smarter, not harder. It's like do the right things and then do those really hard. Right. So it's like, okay, well, if I know on a referral, I've got, let's just say a 50% close rate. Why wouldn't I want those when my other closing rates are you know, 25%? Right. I'm just throwing out easy math here for, no, I understand for a dummy saying. like me. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I started realizing that I'm like, man, these these are way easier to close. It's it's so much more of a high quality referral or lead. And so I started doing more and more of them. Then all of a sudden I realized, oh, if I start writing these handwritten notes, now my relationship with my referral partner grows. They're more likely to refer me. And the people that are referring me, if I can have that what you said, that human side of it and create a relationship. Now they're more likely to refer me. And all of a sudden it's a snowball effect. It doesn't happen right away. Yeah, I'd say- but Once that sucker builds, man, it's it's awesome. I'd say whenever we started doing the handwritten notes and that, you know, the calls and working by referral yeah. mainly, what happens is, is you automatically walk in the door and you have that trust. Yeah. And trust is like crazy important. People just forget mm -hmm. about that. They're like, Oh, I got a job. They're automatically going to trust me. And you're like, no, no, <laughs> no, they're not no. like they're trusting you to rip off an entire roof, protect them from rain and water and hope it just goes okay. Yeah. You know, and having that trust and the, I get I, a lot with the workers too, you know, I guess blue collared workers out there, there's automatic distrust in the industry because we're expensive. Right. Yeah, and unfortunately, and, a lot of people within that industry have earned that distrust. Oh, well, that is true. Yeah, so yeah. people are jaded. Just, just, I'm a contractor. I don't trust contractors. <laughs> like, you want 50% before you start, and I got to hope you show up with material? Like, yeah. I understand. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. I, I don't trust most contractors, right. and I'm a contractor. they're all sketchy. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes well, sense. A lot of them yeah. are sketchy. So, yeah, you got to make sure that, you know, treat them like humans, and we're humans. And if something goes wrong by that human element being there, they automatically 
they're not calling and yelling at you. They're like, hey, Matt, hey, I have a, a roof leak. Uh, you know, y'all just put the roof on. Can you come and check it out? And the, que- the answer is yes. You know, yeah. I'm going to, yeah, I'll be right out there. You know, that should not be leaking. And, but that, but as all of that is said without being said because of the handwritten notes, the phone calls. It's and, all the front end stuff. Yeah. Right. Like I, I don't really have like a saying for it, but if I were to think about that, a, a client having a problem and calling you, that's obviously a back end problem, right? How that problem is is presented to you is going to be dependent on what you do on the front end. Yes, I understand. Right? So that. if you were haphazard in the way you approach things and your communication, or whatever, yeah, you're probably going to get someone calling and yelling at you, feeling kind of frantic. If you did everything you could do to make that person feel comfortable and build trust that was legitimate trust because you're being, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? You're being legitimate in, in what you're portraying. Yeah. Authentic. Yeah, yeah, authenticity. It yeah. was authentic. They're going to call you and say, hey, man, you know, how you doing? Listen, we have a little problem here and you know, problems do happen, but they know that I'm going to take care of it because I do. And it's huge. It makes the, it makes the whole process so much yeah. smoother. So you don't. And one thing, too, he, he like is almost never on social media. The only time he's ever on social yeah. media is like when I'm here. And, and, and <laughs> I, I post jokes and workouts. So. Yeah, his dad jokes are really funny. So do follow him yeah. uh, for the dad jokes. <laughs> Have, have you kept up with the TikTok at all? Your TikTok? No, man, I got off the TikTok. It, was, uh, it just turned into a time suck. Yeah. Actually, uh, TikTok, it, it, this is something I just learned recently. They are the lowest paid content creators. So, oh, really? Yeah. So don't, the only thing you're getting paid with is attention. So, yeah. I saw a video. It was a, it was like a husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend kind of deal. And they went, they're like, we think we're at a million followers on TikTok. And like, so they checked. And they both started crying and they were thanking the people on the camera. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. This, <laughs> this is too much. Yeah. Well, they don't make any money. <laughs> but the, yeah. So now it's like, it's even weirder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're just doing it because people the are watching The vanity runs them. that deep. Yeah. 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 They have a million followers and then they make zero dollars. Yeah. It was, yeah. A, it was a huge time suck. Yeah. So. so it's fun though. Yeah, it is. TikTok, we did sell a few jobs at when it first started, the algorithm was like local. Uh-huh. So whenever we posted a video, it stayed like in Houston and then it branched out to Texas and then okay. it would go out to other states. And now I just realized it kind of just kind of goes wherever. Uh, but whenever it first was created, I, I got a lot of people that knew who I was from TikTok just from being in Houston. Yeah. And we grew up to like 37,000 followers. And now we get like five or six hundred dollars, dollars, six hundred views per post up to a few th- thousand i think thirty thousand on the last one but it doesn't okay. mean it doesn't mean anything like nothing, yeah yeah but like, i think the currency of tiktok is just the it's just the vanity yeah i could i could understand that yeah. and then like facebook and instagram you have a direct link to most of the people that are following you or you're connected to so i feel like that's where the money comes yeah. from in there we kind of went off the the rant there but so his, just keep going down the wormhole. Yeah, buddy. We would, yeah. <laughs> so his strategy is, so whenever you're writing these notes, these mm-hmm. handwritten notes, are they to p- past clients or are they people that you've just ran into? All the above. Okay. Yeah. So, so note writing. And so there's, here's a little hack for how to, how to keep the note writing up. And it really, for me, it's just a way of avoiding excuses and laziness. So I keep notes in my truck in envelopes that are pre-stamped. Oh, you already have the stamps ready to go. go. They're ready to go. So it's like if I leave a client's house, I grab it. It's in my center console. I grab it out. I write the quick note. I put the address on there. In Texas, where I'm from, Virginia, and I guess there's places in Texas that have this, everyone has their own mailbox in front of their house. Mm -hmm. What I've seen so far in in Houston since I've been here, every community has those big community mailboxes. So you just write the note, drive 30 feet, you'll see a mailbox. I stick it in there. And I get on with my day. And then they get the note like two days or three days later. Yeah. And then... And I can't tell you, I've come back for a second meeting. And if, if it's not for new client generation, which I use it for that too, it'll, it'll help you close the deal. So I come back two, three days, you know, two, three days later. Typically, there's multiple bidders on a roof project because they're pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've come in and that note's, you know, it's propped up on like the welcome table in their house. They were so impressed to get a note from a contractor. Oh, I really? guarantee you the other guys didn't do it. Right. Yeah. Just sitting there and they're like, oh yeah, we need to call yeah. Matt because yeah. He, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So how we use the notes in our business is we think the buyer's agent, we think the buyer. And then we also, in some areas where the market is actually really slow, like say Galveston mm-hmm. or Baytown, where we want to branch out into, we'll write thank you notes to the, the listing agent too. It'd be like, Hey, thank you for letting the deal go so smoothly, letting us into the property. And we have like a script that we write and 
it's it's standard verbiage, but it you know it requires effort to write those things. So, yeah. um, but we do it by the hundreds. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. this should be mandatory. So I don't know where to look. You or the camera? This You're should fine, be mandatory. Yeah. So it's my opinion that if you are in business and your business depends on people referring you or you're in any kind of sales, there should be no question because, you know, everything for us at least, right? Everything we do in my opinion has got to be ideally better than what the competitor does. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's how do I present myself? How are my manners on the phone? Do I show up on time? But there's a little check boxes you can check, right? And generally speaking, every competitor is going to check most of those check boxes. Except the for guy the, just shows up late. You'll you'll have those. Except guys. for the time part. Sure. But yeah. Like, you, know, you take like you know, did you return a phone call? Okay. If if you're being asked to bid, you probably return the phone call. Um, are you in the final running of like maybe two or three bidders? Because some people get a lot of bids. Okay. You can assume each of those guys showed up on time and gave a reasonable presentation. But there's only, that only goes so far off the top of your mind. So it's like okay. Did I have a really clean looking photo report attached to my estimate that most people don't give? Okay. I, I have to say box. most contractors out there have like zero photos. Right. And so that's something we've actually instituted recently where it's like, man, let's, let's have that in. That looks really polished. Mm -hmm. It helps avoid any issues. Right. Did I send a handwritten thank you note? Okay. Most guys didn't check that box either. And before you know it, the effort you're putting in is not only developing a relationship here, which if you're not interested in developing relationships, you're not going to be successful working by referral. I Sooner agree. or later, people will see through it. So you have to be genuine, right? But I've, I've created and developed a relationship and I've nudged myself even further to winning that sale. It, I can't I can't recommend the note writing enough. Yeah. No one's doing it yeah. right until now. <laughs> well, it's okay. No, you could tell everybody to do it. They're still not going to do That's it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do it. It's like, isn't, that, isn't that what Gary Vee says? He's like, I can tell you all exactly what I do. It's but true. 99% yeah. of you won't do it. The 1% will, and you guys will You guys will be successful. Yeah, yeah. and that other 99% yeah. is going to complain about why they're not uh, yeah. doing like, what they like, I bought do. this $50 book, and it doesn't work. Be yeah, like, yeah. Well, it does work. You just got to do all the steps. Not, there's not one step you can't Yeah, keep not those people do. away from me. That's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> starting to twitch. <laughs> there, there was one time, actually, you and I, we were trying to create this power team before. It was like yeah, right yeah. before COVID. And I'm still open into it. We just had to wait yep. till COVID. But it's like a power team for marketing. And we're, it was about relationships, we're trying to pull in the agents and your clients mm -hmm. all into one place. And we can cross mingle where we're going to get a roofer, a plumber, electrician. Yeah. you know uh all the main the all the main foundation repair all the main people hvac <laughs> i'll keep going i guess uh, <laughs> Please. all the main people in one area and then we split the marketing costs all the way across yeah but we were looking for an hvac guy you're like yeah he's gonna be good he didn't only show up late to the table he oh, <laughs> showed up smelling like smoke and he was just like talking and he like flinging himself like yeah whatever and you're like as soon as he got up from the table he's like he's done right i'm like yeah, he's, he's, he's done. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name. He's a nice kid. Yeah. Yes, that. Oh, I hope he doesn't see this. <laughs> he might. That's all right. If it's he okay. does, I he, hope he does, man. He like, learns. Live he and learn. learn. That's okay. Yeah, but um, I just remember that that happening, and I was like, me and Matt are going to get along because like, I instantly was annoyed because yeah. you and I, it's funny, you're like, hey, I'll be there in three minutes, and I'll walk to the gate, and I'm opening it, and yeah. you, it's just like, there that's, how, that's how punctual we are, <laughs> yeah. and then this guy is just like, all willy-nilly walking in. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that marketing plan it will work, and it's called the power team, and it it's still it's still on the on the back. We just yeah. got to wait till yeah. uh, COVID when goes away, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> So um, that being said, so reviewing the strategy, it's the thank you notes. And then how long would you say would you wait to follow up with a phone call? You know, so like after you, an initial meeting. Yeah. After I your mean, initial meeting, it depends you, drop on your sales in cycle. Your, you dropped in your thank you card and then you have that phone call, right? Yeah. So, I, I call the next day. Oh, really? Just mm -hmm. like the next day. So and you get the, the initial meeting, the letters dropped. You call the next day just to see how everything's going. Mm -hmm. And then the letter shows up. Yeah. So it's just like a, a trickle effect that and happens. Quite all frankly, they might get another phone call from there. So the typically for me, it's the initial meeting. If we're talking about a sale I'm trying to make, it's the initial meeting. I get in my truck, I write the letter, get the letter in the mail. The next day I'm going to follow up with them. Okay. Right? At that point of conversation, I'm not going to get off the phone without a co-developed follow-up plan is the term I like to use. I probably stole that from somebody. So like, let's say you're my client. Sounds like Buffini. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's probably where I got it from. Um, 
So, it, you know, hey, when do you want me to follow up with you? And then when you tell me, okay, can you follow up with me Monday? Yeah, great. What time Monday? Morning or afternoon? Uh, around lunch. Cool. Call you at 12? Yeah. That's going in my phone like it's an appointment. And I will be calling you a couple minutes before 12. You got to respect and any commitment you make, right? So for the people listening to that, if, if you're like, man, I got to be more punctual. I'm not good at that. Maybe that'll help my business. It will. Um, but realize too, when you make the, the commitment to make the phone call for your next follow-up, don't call it 1210. That's like showing up at the house at 1210. You're supposed to be there at 12, right? Maybe I'm being crazy about that. No, I, 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 it, it's right in my agree. calendar and it's treated like, you know, when I was supposed to be here at, at a certain time, we scheduled for 130. I got here at 116, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Same deal. You know, treat your phone calls the same. I completely agree. I mean, that it says a lot. You're, you're on time whenever you showed up to the house and then you're like right on time to, to uh for that phone call yeah i know you're going to be on time to replace my roof or right. it, it be at the home that, inspection right and that's what i mean about the authenticity though if all of a sudden outside of that you start dropping the ball left and right they're like oh wait this guy's full of crap and and it goes all the way back to what you said at the very beginning of the podcast it's just consistency yeah it's it's all about consistency all right there you go so that's uh matt's strategy whenever it comes to marketing so i kind of want to move into report writing um report writing and for roofers and home inspections. And, you know, what I like to say nowadays is, uh, uh, pictures are free, you know, yeah. <laughs> like they're, they they do not yeah. require any effort whatsoever these days. And yeah, they're, they're free. And one of the things that you said to me in the past, you said, man, I really like it when I get an A action report because I don't even have to go out to the property. I can give a very accurate report and I don't, I don't even have to leave my truck. I can open it up, write down whatever I need and give them a price and mm -hmm. I don't have to leave. It no, you might not even land what I'd say probably off of home inspection reports. You probably don't even land like 90% of them. Would you say that's true? Yeah, it's less than 10%. Yeah, less yeah. than 10%. Which is why my, my time commitment is extremely minimal. Right, so that's our job, right? So for your, for your client too, like your client doesn't have very much time either uh, or our client i guess right. uh, doesn't have very much time because they're in this short option period so you say you need a roofer which is most of the houses in houston they need some sort of repair um, out there matt needs specific data to give a client accurate readings without wasting his time either you know his time's important the client's time's important and he doesn't want to travel out to something that's he's not going to make any money on 90 percent of the time right that's yeah. not where you're going to spend your effort right. so all, that falls on us like our job is to give you data so you can give an accurate report so what are you looking for what are the key pictures that we need to have in our report so any roofer Mainly Matt, right? Send it all to Matt. <laughs> but any roofer needs uh, a referral. Yeah, well, so one thing you mentioned, um, keeping in mind too, if a client has a 10-day option period, they're probably reaching out to me at like day nine and a half. Right. And so time is very short at that point. Which, side note, um, if you're listening to this and you want to refer to us, or if you're a roofer and you want to start getting into this kind of business, my my general rule of thumb when I'm speaking to a new group of realtors, and I will get back to that question, drag me back if I get, get too off topic. Okay, you're here. good. Go ahead. Um, but that conversation is, is typically, just so everyone's aware, if you need an inspection done, an estimate given within like four hours, the answer is no. Like we have to be respectful of each other's time, right? And right. It's just the reality of the way that business is. But what you do get and what I can help out with is I get a call from a realtor that is a good referral partner of mine. So of course I'm willing to do what they need me to do. And if I have a good report, like what you give me, and I'll, I'll detail that in a second, I can look at those photographs and send them back a number, like within three minutes, right? Would you Super say the number, would you say the number's higher maybe? No, it's, I tend to price off of a menu. Okay. Um, I'm, I kind of try to systemize everything just so it's easier to, to, batch out so to speak like in, in you know larger quantities for sales guys that that work at our office that cuts down the time for me so i can say okay it's it's going to have to have new sealants on all the all exposed fastenings all flashings the flashing around the chimney is incorrect so that's got to be replaced and i just sort of go down the menu and then boom there's my price like okay i've done enough of them that it's like okay that and that 1500 email goes out okay yeah now are they 100 percent accurate 
No, they're like 98% accurate. So they're pretty good. Right. But I can do that off of your inspection reports. There's a few other ones that float around Houston. Um, not for lack of not liking them. I just, I don't know the names of them off the top of my head. Um, should I think Matt? I've seen a couple of his. Yeah. Matt, yeah. 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 Matt's Brady? a good, yeah. Braiding. Yep. Yeah. He's, yeah. His, are, his are good. Texas Edge. Yeah. Texas Edge go. Home and, Inspections. And what I'm looking for. So for example, let's say, um, I'll give you a good example and a bad example. It's like a, an example from one of yours or one of Matt's is if there's a leak, you're seeing staining on the decking. I also have a picture from up top showing me about where it is. So I can make a determination, oh, that's right next to some lifted flashing. Or, oh, that's right in the middle of the field shingles and there's no penetrations around there whatsoever. I'm gonna have to dig deeper there, right? If all I have is a picture of, of dark colored decking in an <laughs> attic that's like you know kind of sketchy, I can't really make it out, I can't do much with that, right? No, and, 100, and I can't confidently give an estimate. I 100% agree. And one of the things I say whenever I'm training is like whenever you're building this report, you're telling a story, you yeah. know, that's what I always like to say. So like, yeah, you, cool. You found some damage, but you got to remember someone's going to read this like a book, <laughs> you know, so like. And a guy like me needs to read, read like a, like a picture book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs a picture book yeah. these days, especially with home inspections. You cannot accurately, no one's going to read a thousand word description on, I like to say the roof's leaking, the deck is damaged, north side of the property. And you'll have like 10 photos. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah I gotta be honest, man. Like. If you, that's a great point. If you're a, if you're a tactician in your field of home inspecting and you put all this effort into writing up like a really detailed description, I'm not saying don't do it because I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to do within the business, but I can tell you with you know 100 certainty nobody cares. The pictures <laughs> will tell the story. Yeah, nobody right? can, nobody cares. No, I mean the the contractors don't. I can look at a piece of flashing and go, oh, okay, there's an issue with the flashing, right? Right. The realtor has no idea what you're talking about for the most part. They you're know what? about real estate. One hundred percent correct. So they're gonna get they're gonna get their report and go, oh, problems with the roof, roofer, please help me, right? And then I can step in and look at the photos and go, okay, that's what's going on, right? Right. The, definitely err on the side of too many photos than too many words. Yeah. Though that's, I'm always, that's one thing that I always like to say is like, sometimes I'll get an inspection report and in the roofing section, I'll, the real, real estate agent will be like, Hey, can you decipher this? I'm like, yeah, sure. It will be like a page and a half of just verbiage. And I'll be like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like this is intense. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's going to read this. I mean, of course, if you go to court, sure, it's going to stand up. Maybe. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. where I want to tread lightly on my advice there. Cause yeah. I'm definitely not a home inspector. But whenever you open up the, uh, to the pictures, they'll have like three or four photos and yeah. then you, they have a page and a half of words. I'm like, nobody's going to be able to solve this problem for this person accurately without going out there right. and redoing the whole thing to begin with. So like our goal is just to document in a way to reduce the amount of trips out to the property. So like I even have a plumber that actually says what we, uh, how we document everything is fantastic. Cause we docu we take a picture of like all the faucets and everything running in the bathroom. And he, he's like, Oh, I can see that there's three sinks in there. You know, this many tubs, the, this, the, this many, this much square footage. Okay. I know that this much galvanized pipes are in there. You know, oh, they, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. you know, like, that the, makes sense. The, but the same concept for you, it's just like, sometimes we can't get on a roof. So we do a, a way up overshot drone shot mm -hmm. of the uh of the roof covering and then we'll even point an arrow exactly where the roof leak is but our comment is just there's a roof leak on this side of the structure and then that's all you need and then you just go off the pictures yeah yeah totally right, totally yes. right. so going with that what would you say is the worst report that you've seen <laughs> That's what I, I don't like know like who sent it or what the actual one was, but I'll give a category of reports, right? I've seen probably at least 10 plus reports where literally the only thought I have when I see it is you charge for this. Like you, you actually <laughs> charge somebody money for what I'm looking at right now because it's telling me nothing. That was my neighbor's report. They asked me to look at yeah, it one time. And it was, it was Jesus. It was like six pages. Like, I think five photos through the entire report. It's, it's, it's disgusting. It's so <laughs> gross. <laughs> yes. I mean, literally, it looks like the, the inspector just stood on the ground. Like, you can, like, kind of see some shingles or whatever the roof material is above the gutter line. Like, roof seems to be in, in serviceable condition. Like, seems to be. Are we sure? Yeah. <laughs> like, is or it? Or they'll say flashing issues. 
where? <laughs> where no picture. I, I don't know. So there's like, no picture. It just says flashing issues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or I mean, that's that's those are my biggest pet peeves. But then you have some where you can tell a home inspector's perhaps outstepping their boundaries. Oh, no worries. They're outstepping their boundaries or their knowledge base. Um, so for example, they'll, they'll say a roof's in good condition. Um, and you can tell the thing is just brittle as can be, or I guess I'll step in the boundaries. They'll, they'll say it's in bad condition, but they'll say, you know, this is a eight year old roof. Um, I'm bouncing around. Eight-year-old roof, but serviceable. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, you can see hail dings all over the soft metals. You can see that the shingle blew off there, like one of the tabs. So it's obviously very brittle. This thing's at least 17 years old. And you don't think they got on it? Okay, so you're saying they're outside of their element. Like, that's yeah, that's yeah. the way of saying it. Like it's. So that would be a word of advice too. Just just include the pictures, and like what you guys do. You know, we recommend you have a roofer look at this. I forget the wording you say, but mm -hmm. I can look at those pictures and like that say, hey, I, you know, I might look at the picture and say that eh, might be hail damage. Well, I'll I'll search it. In, a, in Hail Trace, which is an app we use to see where storms have been, sure enough, there's been hail on that roof. Right. So if you're outside of your element and you don't know, you are just have it further evaluated in a lot of photos. Yeah, yeah. because ultimately, you, it's, it's not because... I don't know how you get yourself in trouble with that as a home inspector because I just don't know that. But ultimately, you may be inadvertently doing your client a disservice. Oh, yeah, you definitely right? are. You or, can't or send them down a rabbit hole that they shouldn't be going down. Well, number one, they should never be telling the age of the roof because it's impossible to tell. I mean, like you might be able to do it because you're that's I can get fairly close. That that's mean all be perfect you do. Yeah. That's all you do. Like you replace roofs and you get to judge ages. But like for home inspecting, I've been on hundreds of roofs and I cannot tell an age of a roof. I mean, yeah. I, I've been see, it's just there's so much discoloration in, in roofs and there's so many different styles. But I can tell you when it's bad. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. You know, that that goes further, too, as as a thing not to do, because what ends up happening there is I look at the report. I say, listen, I think we need to get on this one because I, I, I'm seeing what I think to be hail or I'm seeing these shingles look really brittle. I'm not sure it's repairable. And to give you guys an idea, let's say, maybe we'll explain the prop. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Let's say these are my shingles, right? Fresh -er shingles that are repairable are kind of pliable because when I do a repair, I've got to fold that shingle all the way back to the nail line, pull the old shingle out and then get a new one up underneath there, nail it down. Then I can seal this back down. If the roof is brittle, it means that when I do this, it's going to snap the shingle, right? It so breaks in half. Yeah. So that that roof in my world is is beyond repair, right? Okay. Past repairability. But I, you know, a report might say roofs in serviceable condition. Though they might make the other mistake of saying it's it's only eight or you know, six to eight years old by their estimation. And now I'm telling this potential buyer, hey, I think this roof might need to be replaced. Yeah. So it's a distrust on you or the yeah. inspector, so they and, don't and, know. And now it's, well, the inspector said it was fine. Well, the inspector's a generalist, but you got to realize as inspectors, guys, I'm there to you know help get that through to the finish line correctly. They already probably distrust me as a contractor. And it sounds mighty convenient when the guy that sells roofs for a living tells you you need a new roof, <laughs> yes. right? So no, I agree. keep it general, send a lot of photographs. It just makes the whole process go a lot smoother. Yeah. You need a roof or you don't. It's either performing or it's not. That's what I always like to say. That's what I like yeah. about y'all. Yeah. You don't really make judgment calls. Right. It's just, it's very black and white. It's, yeah. you know, if the roof is in great shape or it needs work. And you yeah. know, and then it's up to Matt to decide like how much work it needs. Yeah. And one thing I always like to disclose too about Matt, I don't ask any money from Matt at all. Like, have you ever written us a referral check? No, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't give them or receive them. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing I always like to tell people is like, whenever I refer Matt out, I don't, I know his prices might be slightly higher, but the thing is, is I know he's going to go out there and do a good job. He's going to be punctual. And he's going to take care of the client the same way we do. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you are the only referral that I send out. I probably should send out another one, maybe. <laughs> nah, no, nah, you're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, a note on that, though, you know, if, if uh, people that are watching this are, are doing, they have a referral type relationship and they're giving referral fees, I'm not going to tell you how to run your business. But I can tell you from experience in the past and doing stuff like that, it always muddies the water. I agree. To, to a point where I don't do it at all anymore. I refer based on competence and I like to be referred based on my competence. That's it. No, I completely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. It's just like 
oh, it's convenient that Matt's prices are slightly higher, and then you're getting a check, and they yeah. hear that you're getting a check well, and, later. You know, people then, are unfortunately jaded because that stuff happens, but... Yeah, we're, we're allowed to do that in the home inspection industry, I believe, as long as it's disclosed, and we did not perform any work at all, but I just... I just, I can't, I get a weird feeling. You know, it's like an ethics. It gets goofy because it, then it's, it's you know, it's feeling. like, yeah, I go and do an inspection. Hey, man, you got my money? I'm like, relax a little bit there, fella. <laughs> yeah. But the, <laughs> no, same, <thank> you. <laughs> yeah, the same thing for me. It's just like, you know, if say agents are referring us out all the time or, and then they're thinking that they're like, well, you, we send you, you know, 30 or 40 jobs, you know, you should send us some money. I'd be like, I'd be like, how about the 30 or 40 jobs where we showed up on time and we did a good, fantastic job and we saved them thousands of dollars, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, so it's just right. They're, it muddies the water. Like no agent has ever received like a, a check for, you know, uh, do, I think that's actually unethical. That is against ethics <laughs> for the legals and standards and practices. You cannot do that. Oh, okay. But no one, no one's ever received anything and they just trust that we're going to do a good job. And the same thing is, is like, Whenever we refer Matt out, he does a good job. But we went down the, another rabbit hole, didn't we? The whole I'm, I'm goal fine was, with it. <laughs> yeah. We talked about boats the last time. Yeah, we did. I've, I've never yeah, we operated talk, a boat. He he's gonna purchase a boat with me one day. He, we definitely definitely talked about Evidently, it. Evidently, I just don't know that yet because yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I send you enough roofs. <laughs> He's going to buy me a Mastercraft boat. It's on the air. It's fact now. <laughs> Technically not a referral fee if it's done uh, <laughs> done at a later date in a giant batch, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I've sent you hundreds of roofs, so then you can turn around and buy me a boat. Well, keep in mind, if my closing rate's below 10%. It's probably like 7. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Oh, 3. no. 3.5. <laughs> 3.5. No, it's, it's, it's okay. So... Um, Leading on to the next part of the podcast is, uh, what is this thing that's sitting on the desk in front of us? Yeah. Okay. So this is a pipe jack or pipe fitting, depending on how you want to explain it. And I thought I'd bring this in when you mentioned, is there something we could talk about? Um, it's like a physical item because I think like the second or third time I came and hung out with you, we did a chat with some of your inspectors. Yeah. I had the whole team in there and I said, what should they be looking for? Yeah. And we talked about these. Um, so what this does, well, you guys probably know what this does. I'm talking to home inspectors. Why do I like this? So you, you could think about pipe gotta, boots. They're on air. So describe oh, what, I'm sorry. what it is Okay. First. So if you're not watching this, it's a pipe fitting and it sits down on top of your plumbing stacks. So you'll typically in the Houston market have on average about nine of these on the roof. Older parts of town, you'll have a little bit less. Some parts you'll have a ridiculous amount, but it's a penetration on a roof. And it's important to focus on these because these are most often the ones leaking. So he's talking about the plumbing jacks on the roof or the plumbing stacks. And yeah. The, or the, those are the white PVC pipes that are sticking out of your roof. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So in the way you guys mostly, or I would assume see them mostly, is you see the white PVC pipe exposed, sticking up through the roof. Correct. And there's like a little, little rubber boot that attaches around the base. And it's got this little collar that sits around the pipe. Right. So I would call, if, if I'm looking at pipe jacks from a scale of one to three, I would call that a one. And I think I joked with you guys, like the appropriate application of those is never. Never. Just but don't use them. all the time, right? Oh, yeah. You they're, know, they're, they're on my house. We, we have a house in one of these big communities where they built, you know, several thousand houses. Across. All track builders use them. They're cheap. Yeah. And, and the reason they do is because they're, you know, $5 rather than $18. I and mean, when, you're, when you're building 4,000 houses, those kind of numbers make sense. Right. You get it, Right. You'll typically on an older house see those. They're all cocked up around where the where the pipe meets the the fitting. The reason for that is the UV rays and all the heat and weather we get here. It just cracks them. Ten of those out of ten are going to leak at some point, right? The fix for that that people started using is a lead pipe fitting, and the idea behind that is it's a one piece kind of sheath where you no longer have the seam. And it's malleable. They can move it really That's easy. correct. Yeah. yeah, which would be the one drawback of this. We'll get into that in a second. Yeah, they're malleable, so you, you can sort of get them to, to lean the way you need to, right? Depending on the pitch of the roof. Problem with those, if there's trees near the roof line, which most houses will have them, even super tall houses like what we're in right now, is squirrels like to chew on those. Lead's kind of sweet. It's kind of soft. And so now... They use it for their teeth. Yeah. You've yeah. just taken happy squirrel while they eat them, bummed out squirrel while they try to digest it, I guess. 
while they try to they actually don't eat it. it they use it their teeth never stop growing so a is lot of people yeah. i've never known this okay yeah, so educate me on critters <laughs> they're the rodents and their teeth never stop growing so they're filing down their teeth nice. okay. and that's what they're doing yeah so they're actually not ever died my understanding so they're just trying to chip away at the tooth yeah they're just sharpening their teeth and oh, it's I, a perfect I material those guys would do that he probably does. Yeah. One of these guys got me in trouble once. Yeah. I could go into the story in a little bit, but like, <laughs> so it was actually on Joe Giassano's house. Like Joe oh, Giassano, no one of his clients, we inspected one of their properties. We ended up taking care of it. We probably shouldn't, but it's we did. But we did an inspection. You're we welcome, had a Joe. Don't, I'm not. I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we did an inspection. You know, we had good pictures. We even had pictures of all the jacks and stuff. And then the client moved in. I'd say. Uh, six, 60 days later, we get a phone call after a rainstorm, of course. And then, um, they said all my plumbing jacks are messed up. And I think I remember sending you this photo for whatever reason. And, but they weren't just like messed up. They were like ripped up, oh, you no. know, like they were all, and I was like, what would do this? Yeah. And I think you're the one that told me like, was vermin. Yeah. It's rac- like, rac- not even squirrels, like raccoons, man. Something bigger. Yeah. He was mad. Yeah. <laughs> like, they want to get in there. Yeah. And it was all of them. I mean, all of them. I was like, I was like, it's not, I just try to explain to him. I was like, it's very unlikely that my inspector missed this. It's like practically impossible. Right. You know, we have pictures of it. It's on the roof and they're just, I mean, it was like metal just all mangled, over the place. Right? Yeah. yeah. Raccoon did it, but I paid for it. It's okay. I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's just like the cost of the doing business, you know, but now, but then also we started taking even better photos. So it's a, I always, that's how you learn, right? That's just like, we just had a, I call those tuition payments. We just had one of those recently. uh, My mom always says, and I bring this up all the time. It's like education's expensive. It's just a matter of how you pay for it. So I didn't go to college. Right. Yeah. I dropped out after seven years. (laughs) Seven (laughs) seven years. Something. I didn't go to college. So (laughs) all of my lessons are learned through hard knowledge. And I yeah. put that on as a hard knock and a seven hundred fifty dollar class, and all the boots are fixed, yeah. and um, and our reports are better from it. So that's how I viewed it. Even better for you guys, learn from the expensive mistakes of other people. Oh yeah, that's, that's even better. That's leveling up right there. That's the <laughs> that's the way to do it. I'm only where I'm at because my father made all his mistakes, and yeah. I learned from all his mistakes, and now I'm learning all. That's and it. I made some of his mistakes yeah. too because I didn't listen. Shoot, we could do a couple podcasts on a bunch of dumb mistakes I've made. <laughs> It'd be effective. <laughs> I have uh, hundreds. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anywho, so you have the lead jacks. That's interesting about the squirrels. But the squirrels would chew on it. So now all we've done is we've tried to fix what's happening where the pipe meets the base. But in reality, we've just moved up where the leak's coming from. Right. right? So that's what this is. This is a bullet boot. Bullet like what goes into a gun. Boot. Two words if you want to look them up. And what I like about this, it's got a little screen at the top. It's a nice thick TPO rubber is, the I think, the primary ingredient in this thing. One piece. And it's got a fitting that goes down into the pipe as well. So it's a nice snug fit. The sun's not going to bake it. Critters aren't going to do anything to it. The one problem you can have, which really it, it's negated by the fact that it's made of TPO because that's designed to withstand ponding, is it's not as malleable. So if I have a pretty steep slope, you're going to have, and I've seen you guys call these kind of things out on reports before. Um, if you're listening, you're not going to see it. If you're watching, maybe you can, but it creates like a little pocket in the back if you if you put it at oh, too much of a slope. Yeah, we call that a buckle. Yeah, so it's not going to be a problem on this because it's, it's actually designed to withstand ponding. Okay. I would still choose this 10 times out of 10 over a lead jack in that application because typically when you have a, almost a mansard wall where it's a really steep slope that's going to cause that effect, it's in a part of town that's got trees above the roof line. Mm. So you got to pick your poison there. Much safer with, with this option, I think. How much do one of these cost? Probably 23 bucks, something like that. 23 bucks. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're marginally more expensive than the lead jacks. I don't charge How much is a lead jack? Around 18. Eight. Oh, wow. They're really not that yeah, much. Depending on what size you're buying. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know an, a lead jack was $18. I think yeah. so, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I have to swing back by home. It, it's been a long time since I've looked at an invoice on a lead jack, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm probably going to get in trouble yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, but or they're like, no, it's like seven. Yeah. 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 So, but really, I mean, at the. What's the life expectancy of uh, a bullet boot? It realistically should outlast the roof. So 25 years, easy. Yeah, I think they're warranted for like 30 years. So in a lead jack, I'd say five, six years. If, if it gets that long. If it gets yeah. that long. So, I mean, shoot, look at the one where that problem happened, right? They were good. Two months later, they're shredded. Right, exactly. Yeah, so... You know? So... 
you say it is seven dollars like mm -hmm. this thing's already going to pay for itself just by it being on your roof oh for sure and like when we install roofs i could very well like a lot of our competitors do put the super cheap basic boot on we as a company automatically upgrade to the lead jack like that's how we were doing it when i first came in years ago and now just about everybody automatically upgrades to these. They just put them on automatically. Yeah, it's, it's not a big cost difference. I don't pass that along to the client. It's just, in a way, it's saving me money in the long run. You don't, don't have to go out for fallbacks. repairs. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't want the client's roof to leak. So if I can spend an extra five bucks per unit yeah, and so put what, something better on, I'm going to do it. Overall, it might cost you an extra 300 to $500, depending on the size of the roof. Yeah. I mean, maybe weekly, depending on how many roofs we're putting on. It's right. not much. Well, right. well worth it. No. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. keep an eye out for bullet boots. And if you're not using bullet boots, make sure that you use them. Yeah. And I think I've out of all the roofs that we're on all the time, I think I've only sent you one picture of it being on a roof. And it was probably one of y'all's roofs. I think early on, you're like, is this a bullet boot? I'm like, yeah, you found one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're nowhere to be seen. So yeah, definitely, uh, if you do replace your roof, use that. Yeah. I will. There are some other like quote lifetime, uh, Pipe fittings, these are the, the most sleek looking, I think. There's some mm. that look like little tanks. They're kind of crazy looking. I think I've seen those, yes. Yeah, and there's like, it the almost looks like they rotate or it's something. It's got like a hinge on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of those. I think they're just kind of unsightly. Um, but this has a nice sleek look. It blends in with the roof. Are they made of the same rubber material? No, I think those are some kind of a hard plastic. Gotcha. These are the only ones I've ever, I've ever messed with. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. So I think we could probably end it there. Is there cool. anything, you got any uh, crazy weird stories for a roof? I'm not sure we can say them here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. All right. So that's Matt. Br wow. I almost said braiding. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's Matt Rather Brewster, be, yeah. the roofer. He's with Remedy Roofing. And uh, what's the best way they can contact you? Uh, so if you want to follow me on Instagram to see my very not funny jokes that I post all the time, that is LDBrew3, I think. I'm um, on Facebook, Matt Brewster. If you want to check out what we're doing on the business side of the house, I don't post quite as much to my personal one, but Matthew Brewster, Remedy Roofing. Um, otherwise, call into the office, Remedy Roofing. You can just ask for me. Nice. Sweet. That's it. And then please always like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on podcast and all the other places and check out our, our home IW page, homeiw.com. And that's where we post most of our coaching material. We don't coach. We just tell you exactly what we do. Pay yeah. <laughs> tell you exactly what we do. Check out our book. All right. Thanks guys. Catch us on the next one. Cool. Bye. Bye. Oh, man. Thanks. Yeah, we did it. We didn't get too far off topic either.